I started uh, my career with a company called uh, NEC. It's a uh, computer and telecom products. Um, and uh, uh, I, was, I started uh, with NEC in Japan and uh, I was in charge of uh, marketing the telecom network to North America. And then I spent total 11 years in uh, Northern Virginia. Um, it's uh, kind of NEC's headquarter for North America Telecom system. So um, kind of back and forth in Japan and, and Virginia, I spent, you know, total 11 years there. And, and then uh, 2003, I moved to JAE. Um, JAE um, is, has a financial um, relationship with NEC. NEC is one of the, uh, uh, the shareholder of um, um, JAE. So actually, I be working for the same boss, that my boss moved from NEC to JA and uh, recruited me. And uh, spent two years in Japan and came to California to run the US operation of the company. JA stands for Japan Aviation Electronics Industry. So it started, it began its uh, business with uh, aviation electronics technology. Um, just like uh, navigation, like a gyro technology. That's how it started in 1953. Um, then it moved to, you know, e expand the business into a connector, you know, uh, and uh, some of the user interface, like a touch screen panel, things like that. So um, now, you know, the aviation electronics um, business is only 10% of the 1.5 billion global sales, and 76% uh, is connector. And so JA uh, is one of the uh, uh, top 10 connector company in, in, in the world market. It's very particularly strong in the uh, PC, like uh, mobile phone, PDA, digital audio player, digital TV, and automotive. Um, the global business is about 1.5 billion and uh, fact has factories in Japan, China, Taiwan, Philippines, and, and the US and Mexico. I kind of brought this uh, corporate, uh, uh, I say, pamphlet. And um, in this, it says, you know, our corporate slogan says, technology to inspire innovation. That's a, you know, kind of global corporate mission. What you know, it means is you know, we are not the innovator of you know, any like a, you know, P new PC or PDA or cell phone by ourselves. But um, our, our customers are the technology leader in those fields. And they are the one who's always looking for innovation. And um, we always try to help them to achieve what they need to do. So we're particularly good at, you know, when you say connector, you know, there, there's so many different connectors and then some connector is a, you know, commodity parts. But our connector goes in a, you know, very small laptop PC or cell phone. And so, you know, when that our customers trying to come up with very innovative product, our engineer help, you know, work with them closely, try to, you know, fit in, you know, the footprint they need. So, we are the one always, you know, with our precision technology, we try to um, inspire the innovation of our customer. That's our global um, mission statement, I would say. Um, and with my company, uh, which is in North America, we try to bring in this technology, you know, that our, you know, uh, global operation, that, you know, develop, and then we try to deliver it to the right, you know, customers, you know, the customers that are wanting it, and with our, you know, outstanding service. You know, I really believe in that, you know, um, only the happy employee can provide the good customer service. So if the employee is not happy with their job, there's no way that they can provide a good customer service or make their customer happy. So, you know, I try to um, uh, 
give a good incentive. Like, you know, we do have uh, profit sharing. We, when we make customer happy and, you know, repeated customer, sales grow, you know, that comes with the profit. And, uh, you know, we, we share those with, among the employee, but based on, um, you know, their own performance goals, you know, if they meet the performance goals. So we try to, uh, you know, make the people who try hard rewarded for it and so they know it so you know they willing to help the customer because that you know affect the company performance so you know they relate that so I try to uh, make them you know happy with what they do and meaningful and um, I also use uh, opportunity like um, you know we have uh, twice a year um, annual uh, business meeting and we have you know dinner inviting many employees I use those opportunity to give a kind of uh, award for the you know good service and sometimes I read emails you know letters come from customers and talking about you know wow you know I received good service you know I'm not asking those you know email to come but they sometimes this customer wanted to just let us know the management know you know such and such you know did really great job so I try to introduce those, you know, letters, you know, with uh, all the employees share that. And that, that gives a great motivation to pe those people who is interfacing with customers. Um, and also, you know, do lots of, you know, trainings, um, buy the books for, you know, um, those people who is, you know, in the customer service. Uh, one of the books uh, I bought and read and read was um, The Moments of Truth. That was written by Ian Carlson, who uh, kind of changed the company of uh, Scandinavian airline system, SAS. It used to be a kind of very bureaucratic, um, air, you know, company. It used to be, seems like, but he kind of changed it completely, based on you know how you know the, really the customer service point of view. So you know, let let them you know read how some company doing. That kind of you know help you know give them some idea of what what's the good customer service is. As I mentioned earlier, you know our company really differentiate our, ourselves in this precision technology. Even when we say connector, for example, we stay in a very you know high density, very narrow pitch. Um, products, uh, which is very difficult to produce and difficult to develop. So definitely technology itself, the uh, precision technology, started with uh, our, our aviation um, electronics. That's our, I would say, core competence. And uh, um, another thing is, you know, because in order to, you know, make those um, technologically um, challenging product, uh, we also emphasize on uh, quality. So in order, and in order to achieve that, you know, I think we're going maybe um, opposite way from some of the manufacturers in today's world, which means some of the manufacturers focus on the engineering, marketing, and manufacturing the outsource. We rather want to have all the vertical integration of you know all the manufacturing process in ourselves, in the company. So instead of um, selling the factory to the contract manufacturers and outsource the manufacturing to, to those contract manufacturers, we expand our own factory, both in Japan, in Asia, and in North America. We try to do, you know, from, um, you know, all the process, plating to stamping to molding, you know, everything within our, our factory to keep a certain level of uh, quality. You know, that's what we try to differentiate ourselves. Yeah, as a you know, 
as a Japanese-based uh, company in, in America. Sure, you know, there's always, that's pretty much, you know, my job to, you know, do, you know, take care every day. Um, I would say, you know, some of the difference, I would say the emphasis, um, as you know, the Japanese companies are, you know, still very much, you know, lifelong employment. So once you start working for a company, it's almost like given that you work for the same company for the rest of life. It's changing a little bit now, but um, you know, like my case, uh, changed from NEC to JAE, but it's still basically wor working for the same boss. <laughs> you know, so there's a uh, um, many cases like that. And uh, um, anyway, my point is, you know, this is a still a society believing in a long, lifelong. Uh, employment. So that gives a little bit different mentality, m meaning a lot of emphasis on, you know, creating a, a good relationship with your colleague. You know, once you burn the bridge with the important colleague, that's uh, really, uh, you know, can damage your career for, you know, um, for, your, for your life. So for Japanese, it's Across community is like your, you know, the company, you know, colleague, uh, still the case. Um, so that that emphasis really comes in for Japanese employee. Um, American employee, on the other hand, um, put more emphasis on professionalism, and uh, of course, you know, work-life balance is another thing, um, and you know. There are lots of the communities that be, they belong to. It's not just the the company and the colleague. It's not the only community that you know they feel you know important for their you know life. It's um, community, the local community. There's uh, you know church, you know things like that. That the community that you know they belong to. Um, so that's. Um, makes a difference in, I guess, priorities sometimes. You know, the ja Japanese expat, particularly, uh, for them, you know, this community they belong to is really the company. So they, you know, don't mind working long hours. On the other hand, you know, the way uh, American professional work is, you know, try to do it in, you know, as efficient as possible in the, you know, uh, limited time and then use other time for, you know, other part of, you know, priorities in life. So those things always, you know, come sometimes, you know, uh, that comes as a difference in, in emphasis. Yeah, I value, um, the sense of contribution um, in, in, in the business. Um, maybe I brought some uh, maybe example. Again, the twice a year, um, I try to explain how the company is doing and you know what's our goal as a company to all the employee. So it's like a you know kickoff meeting for the fiscal half. And uh, just you know April 17th, I did this one, and uh, I started with with this page. Says uh, five million three hundred sixty-six thousand four hundred minutes, and I asked the old employee, "What you know this mean? You know, if you uh, calculate this into days, it's about three thousand seven hundred days. So, you know, it's more than ten years. If you count every minute of the ten, ten, ten years, it's about this. This is." Um, Total working minutes in life, average total working minutes in life. So it's, if you count every minute, every single minute, it's a little bit over 10 years. But, you know, of course, you don't work every single minute. So you spread it out for four years. That's, you know, that, that's what it is. So, but I, I think my point was, you know, 5.4 million minutes are the, you spending at your work in your life. And uh, 
My point was not really to depress anyone with that comment. <laughs> My point was, you know, you take this many minutes out of your life working. And um, so if you do, work has to be, of course, is an important means to earn your money for your living. You know, no one can deny that. But if you're spending this kind of amount of minutes, I ask the employee, do we want to spend the minutes with a sense of contribution, with the sense of achievement, sense of, you know, that you grow yourself from what you do, and with the sense of uh, camaraderie instead of, you know, you always feel that you're working by yourself. And of course, with fun and excitement, you know. So if you spend this amount of time in your life, you know, how you spend that time? You know, maybe, especially like you feel, want, don't we want to spend the time that you have the sense of contribution to your society, your community? With that said, you know, I came back to that mission statement technology to inspire innovation. I don't repeat this here, but, you know, company, you know, um, how we contribute to our, our society with our, you know, our company. And, you know, our corporate vision. And also I ask, you know, you know, as a, you know, manager, I always have to ask people, you know, the, look at those numbers, you know, how we grow the sales and how we're doing with the profit. But sometimes, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that um, my employee understands how what they do relates to those figures, numbers. So I started with this question, why do we need to grow? You know, because I always wanted to see the growth in our business. And, you know, the question could be, why can't we stay at the same size of the business as long as we, you know, contribute to the society? But well, why do we need to grow? You know, my answer to them was, uh, if we grow, we can hire more experts and professionals so we can produce the better product, we can get the better service to the customers. So it's really uh, increase our value to the customer. And uh, then I questions, why do we need to generate the profit? I always, you know, talk about the profit the company making and, and wh why, you know, and, you know, um, and uh, just, you know, wanted to make sure that everyone understand, you know, to continue to operate for our customers, employees, and of course there's other stakeholders, you know, our suppliers and, you know, uh, parent company and all that. Of course to pay to the employee and the subcontractors and to reinvest for better future operations. As, you know, we, invest a lot to expand our manufacturing facility, for example, those profit needed to reinvest in, you know, creating better manufacturing uh, facility for us. So those things I just wanted to explain. And why do we need to meet financial goals, financial target, you know, because it's really reflect how we're doing. You know, that number tells us if, if you know, our product, has a value to the customer or not, you know. So with those things said, you know, I started talking about our numbers and all that. So um, the point here is, you know, I want it, I always feel that um, the employee and the company can uh, perform better if um, they see um, the meaning to what they do and if that particularly relate to the contribution you're making to the society and the community you live. That makes a difference of um, how you perform. That's my um, strong belief. Well, really nothing uh, comes easy, but um, I would say among those um, the crisis management, I would say it's, uh, in, in a way, it's easy to, to focus attention because it's, everyone knows it's a crisis. Everyone knows we need 
to focus on it, and everyone knows we need an immediate solution to it. So you know, certain things you know require very long term. You know, you need to work. Um, it takes time to achieve this. Crisis management is you know, it's everyone's attention is there, energy is there to you know get to the resolution. So in that sense. It's easy to get everyone's attention and focus. Challenging part of those all elements, I would say the human resources is the challenging, most challenging for me because, well, first of all, it takes a very long time to build the strong team. We, we mean, quite successful, but uh, it's always difficult. So I've been very careful that, you know, takes us a very long time to locate the right person for the job. Um, and of course, it takes time to train the employee. Um, and of course, it's sometimes difficult to, and it takes time to change the culture. Um, like our company, for example, uh, as I mentioned, you know, our strength is really the technology. And uh, uh, sometimes you know, we develop something, the product that, that no one else could. So you know, the customer um, critically wanted. And there was a time we were not spending you know, enough priority into on, onto the um, customer satisfaction and service because you know customer really came to us because of the differentiated technology but today's marketplace you know you can't do that it's um, there's always a you know competitors you know come with uh, you know the similar product right away and uh, now we really need to emphasize on on the customer satisfaction and service so it took a while to really change the mentality of the employee, make the message what what's really the outstanding service means. Not just not just a good service, but outstanding service that the customer really feels that they want to come back, you know. And then those things really take time. So you know, a, one day can pass without you know changing something. So, but you really need to continuously work on it. So that's the, I would say, most challenging part of the human resource. As I mentioned, uh, I started my career with NEC, um, but uh, NEC has moved their focus from manufacturing to more to the providing the solution but I since started I wanted to build my career on the international business especially you know I had a passion to you know um, bring a Japanese technology to US market and that's been what I enjoyed in my opinion that what Japanese company really um, has a a benefit and contribution to this market is the hardware that you know um, the hardware that we built to uh, the great you know quality and uh, cost performance and that's why I believe in so I wanted to stay in the hardware business so the the people that I worked for in NEC um, kind of recruited me to JE so that I made a decision to move to Jay because Jay still stayed in a very much of the hardware um, development, hardware manufacturing, and, and particularly with the, all the internal um, uh, vertical uh, integration of the manufacturing process, which I really love. So that's how, how I made the decision. I try to be, 
you know, ahead rather than be reactive to. So in, other, in, a, in a way, try to anticipate, you know, um, what's going to happen, what, you know, be prepared for it rather than, you know, uh, be reactive to it because that's where, you know, you has to consume a lot of time. Also, um, I think that's what every manager do, but, you know, prioritize, you know, what need to be done at the beginning of the day before you walk into the office because once you walk in the office, there's always crisis management and uh, always those crisis management, you know, take your, you know, focus and attention. And it's easy to, you know, let a day pass just walking on, you know, reactively to those issues. So you, they could be buried with it, but something that really, really important, you know, may not be done today, but if you don't do something, that will have a great impact later. So before I walk in the office, I try to always think this needs to be done, you know, from, especially from long-term goal point of view. This is something that I should be doing today and try to reserve that kind of time. That's one thing. Also, of course, you know, delegate, delegate what you can delegate, of course, um, is another way to, you know, manage your time. When I delegate some work, um, I try to explain why it need to be done and um, why it is important to the person that I delegate the job, the work to. So the person will know from the beginning what, why it's important and what, what needs to be done. So once, once I delegate it, basically let them run instead of, you know, checking, you know, every time. So that delegation is another thing. And also there's always idle time or I say wasted time in our daily life that, uh, you know, if it's 15 minutes, you think, well, you cannot do much anyway. So, you know, let go. But I guess even if it's a 15 minutes, it's, it's a one unit that you can do something actually, you know. So try to find those 15 minutes in your daily life and then use it for, especially for something that you want to achieve in the long term. I'm pretty much dedicated to, to, to the job I have now. So I really want to um, grow this company, um, the U.S. operation of the company, because um, um, we do have a great technology that, you know, that we contribute to, to this market. So I think there's still a lot room to, to grow. And so that's what I like. It, my, my immediate goal is that, and I, I'll probably dedicate my, you know, next several years, um, five years, ten years to that. And uh, after that, you know, I, I, I've been in this career path of um, understanding the, the different intercultural issues, as I explained, and uh, I love to um, bring in uh, Japanese technology, Japanese culture, um, to the you know U.S. market. You know, along the line, I I continue to um, develop my career path. My own father as a great motivator, and also my father-in-law um, as a great business manager. Actually, he's an American uh, uh, person uh, living in uh, Midwest, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. He started uh, his Toyota dealership in 1965 when no one knows what is Japanese car, you know, especially in the Midwest, you know, you know, who, you know, what is Toyota, basically. That's the time well, early 60s, uh, he went to Japan and uh, he saw all the taxi cab was Toyota. 
and uh, he had uh, this passion about the car. He built his own the classic cars, and he um, is a very handy person. And he he this had this passion about the car, and, and he saw this uh, Toyota car, taxis in Japan, and he thought this is it, this is it. So when he came back to the states, he. Um, he, I, I think in 1965, it, probably it wasn't that difficult to get the Toyota dealership because no one wanted, <laughs> I guess. Um, but he did get the dealership, and um, according to him, it took one year to sell his first car. And um, I, I think he had to do a lot of probably some sort of modification maybe to the car, especially at that time, you know, because of this very cold weather, maybe you need to touch something on a radiator or something, maybe. But uh, um, it was very tough to do. But he had this passion and uh, he had this belief that this is going to sell. So, and, and another thing was, you know, he really, you know, he's, um, Emphasizing our customer support, uh, you know, and uh, he, any issues that his, you know, customer has, he's the, he himself really took care of it. So, you know, that's how he started the business. And now, you know, I mean, look at today's um, car market, and he's very, very successful. But um, he's still living in the same house as when he started the dealership and uh, you know his business grew you know to a very great extent but um, he's a very modest person and he's uh, he really you know a lot of the profit he makes from his business he returned that to the community to schools so you know he built the business from the the passion he has, and, and and I can't imagine how difficult it was at the beginning, but he really believes in it. He grew it, but with this old growth, he's still the same, you know, person, same, you know, believing the same, believing the, you know, the contribution, you know, to to the community. So he, you know, is always a great role model for me in. Uh, as a business manager. I think I should have been more aggressive uh, in hiring, particularly for a sales marketing positions because, you know, that's where you need to invest um, to grow the business. And uh, we've been enjoying very healthy growth, you know, two digit you know, uh, percent growth. But um, um, I think we could be even, you know, more aggressively grow if I invested in the, um, the hiring uh, more sales and marketing um, people. That's probably the only area I would do differently. I think first you really need to know what you are passionate about, and um, that that's very important. And um, let me kind of uh, show you. Um, this is a a Chinese character, and it's read in Japanese. It's kokoro zashi, kokoro zashi. English translation of that is like ambition or resolution, but it's something that you have a very strong desire. But uh, um, it's not just what you are interested in. It's something that, um, again, you feel that you have the sense of contribution through it. Um, that, that's the only thing that will keep your passion for a long time. Not just the mere interest, but something that you feel through it that you have a way to contribute. To be successful, you really need to know what your strong desire is. And 
what you really want to achieve. And my belief is if you have very strong ambition, desire, resolution, that you very clear image, as much as detail, that clear image of what kind of person you want to be and how what you want to achieve and how you know you, you like to contribute. If you have that clear image of that, just like my father-in-law stayed in the business, you, you're always going to go through the difficulty. But if you have this very strong desire, you will overcome it or you, you go through it. And I really believe in if you have very strong desire, you'll be successful no matter what.